Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. My name is Clayton Chastain, your host for today's episode. Today we have with us Dr. Neil Jaworski, the Head of Nutrition and Formulation at Trout Nutrition. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Clayton. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thanks for coming. So Neil, would you mind sharing with us the nursery study you conducted? Yes, I would love to. Um, and this study was uh, one of the first uh, commercial type research studies that I did at, at Trout Nutrition. And uh, that's why it was so exciting because we had developed uh, some of this R&D on uh, protein, starch, and fiber digestion kinetics. And we had done some developmental R&D studies. And now was the time to put it to the test at uh, one of our commercial validation farms. Uh, and that's why it was so exciting. Uh, and also that nerve wracking as a researcher at that point, yeah, you're, you're really putting the science to practice and, and seeing if the pigs respond. So what, what we, the objective of this study was to uh, see if we could maintain piglet performance uh, without the use of a pharmacological dose of zinc oxide. And uh, our developmental studies indicated that feeding uh, diets rich in ingredients that supply uh, rapidly digestible protein sources and dietary fibers resistant to fermentation uh, seem to reduce diarrhea. And so we thought, okay, we use pharmacological dose of zinc oxide to reduce post-weaning diarrhea. Maybe we can use fast protein and resistant fiber and also some starch digestion kinetics. Uh, and, and this is the a uh, feed concept called Kinetio, so Kinetio technology to replace the zinc oxide. Uh, and what we did was we had uh, 864 pigs, uh, so a commercial type study. They are weaned at 20 days of age, um, and we had 18 replicates per treatment, 16 pigs per pen. So actually a lot of statistical power. Another reason why I, I really like this study and, and then we had the three treatments where we had a positive control, which was a, a standard uh, a weanling pig diet that Tro Nutrition was feeding at the time that contained a pharmacological level of zinc oxide. We had the negative control, which was exactly the same, uh, but without zinc oxide. And then we had uh, the test Kinetio uh, treatment that uh, completely changed the ingredient composition because we were steering for more rapidly digestible protein sources and more resistant dietary fibers. Uh, and that was the first test because the commercial nutritionists uh, weren't used to this extreme shift in ingredient composition. And that's one of the powers and the unique tools of, of now the protein and, and starch and fiber uh, digestion kinetics is it helps confirm some of the gut feeling or anecdotal evidence that some nutritionists have with all these different piglet feed ingredients. On the other hand, it also goes against a lot of their gut feeling as well. So it, it's, a, it's a, a whole new reality check. Um, and so we formulated this diet. We had same levels of, of net energy and uh, SID lysine, STDD phosphorus. So Everything in all three diets were exactly the same, except ingredient composition and nutrient degradation kinetics. And we had a, we fed those treatments in the first two phases after the nursery. And then we had a common diet that we fed um, at the end uh, or in the third phase till the end of, of the nursery, till 25 kilos body weight. So what, uh, yeah, so what, what, what kind of results did you see? Did it work as well as you expected or? Yeah, when I when I first got the results in, um, it worked better than I expected. I actually thought I was hoping we could maintain performance with our test treatment um, and reduce diarrhea, similar to the positive control, similar to high zinc oxide. And in fact, we saw that our our treatment increased feed intake above the zinc oxide treatment, which increased average daily gain, and we also saw uh, improvements in gain to feed over the zinc oxide, and that we didn't expect. We expected uh, a reduction in diarrhea similar uh, to zinc oxide. That's what we observed, and the added bonus was that. And on top of that, 
we even got an even greater added bonus was that, okay, we reduce diarrhea, we improve performance in those first two phases. So we got the gut health going in the right direction uh, with the, the kinetia or using the, the right nutrient degradation kinetics. And uh, in the third phase, when those pigs were fed that common diet, there was a carryover effect to where the kinetio or the, the test fed pigs had greater performance at the end of, of the nursery uh, or reached 25 kgs faster um, and more efficiently. And, and that was, yeah, quite exciting results. Yeah, that would be pretty exciting. So one question I had is these fast digestible proteins, um, what makes them fast? Are they just from animal protein sources? Some are, are animal protein sources. Uh, others are, are plant sources or uh, processed um, feed ingredients as well, we see. Um, and uh, some of it is the protein structure that makes them faster than others, uh, while others, uh, in fact, uh, behave differently in the uh, digestive tract of a nursery pig compared with a, a grow finished pig or a sow, which the majority of feed ingredient evaluation research and protein evaluation, digestible amino acids, is done on the growing pig level. And when you make the comparison, that's where you start to see this, this difference in digestion kinetics of different feed ingredients. So th that's really playing a role. And then one other question is, what's the, the mechanism behind this Canadio diet? Like, why does the increased protein digestion positively influence performance and gut health in nursery pigs? The, the main mechanism of action is reducing proteolytic fermentation uh, overall. So what we observed is as you increase the amount of fast digestible protein in a diet, uh, yeah, we, we, we find less branch chain fatty acids in the feces of those pigs, and that's correlated with less uh, diarrhea incidence. Um, and we don't know where this fermentation or proteolytic fermentation uh, occurs in the piglet. We know that it occurs in the hindgut for sure, but it actually could, in fact, especially if you have a pathogenic challenge in the barn and you aren't using antibiotics or zinc oxide to help control that, it can occur in the small intestine or even the stomach. So if you use ingredients that are much more rapidly digested, the protein, you limit the risk of even small intestine or stomach from ferment, proteolytic fermentation. Um, and that's really what, what we're targeting uh, by using fast digestible protein. And on the other side, uh, on the fiber uh, side, uh, that, that one seems more obvious. If you use fibers that are resistant to fermentation, well, then you're not going to promote proteolytic or uh, any fermentation in, in the hindgut. And we also use uh, slowly fermentable fibers because we want to promote carbohydrate fermentation in the hindgut of the pig because uh, yeah, microbes will always prefer carbohydrate to proteolytic fermentation. Uh, and that again is reducing our risk for diarrhea. All right, gotcha. Well, that sounds like a very exciting result for a study and you always like to see it when you have uh, better than expected results. Um, but I think that's all we have time for. So thank you for coming onto the show. And to everyone else, thank you for listening to Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com and don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey everyone, we're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show to talk about it and share with us, feel free to send an email to nutritionblackbelt at swineit.com and we would love to take a look at your research. Oh.